Hi, I'm Cedric Peterson and welcome to this special edition of Inside Government. Tourism, St. Martin's primary economic pillar, is dynamic, multifaceted, and today, St. Martin's tourism economy faces the challenges that lie ahead in light of the shift in tourism regionally and on a global level. The question we all now face is the following. Is the market only for the tourists that visit our shores, or do we, the citizens, have a role to play as well? Here now is the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Telecommunication and Transportation, the Honorable Claret Connor, as he addresses the importance of tourism to the St. Martin community. Tourism is firmly established as St. Martin's main economic pillar. Over the years, we have promoted a product of sea, sun and sand, which have welcomed more than 2 million visitors annually to our shores. Our tourism industry offers much more than just sea, sun and sand, however. Our country, for example, has been regionally and internationally proclaimed as the gastronomic capital of the Caribbean, offering culinary diversity representative of our culture, heritage, and lifestyle. St. Martin also offers duty-free shopping and diverse investment opportunities. St. Martin is also known as the Friendly Island. From an economic standpoint, our tourism industry provides for and produces many new perspective and innovative business opportunities. New business opportunities mean the creation of employment possibilities for our people. It is the fastest growing sector in terms of providing income for all of us, whether we are directly or indirectly involved in the industry. The country's national budget for 2015 is established at approximately 450 million guilders or 247 million US dollars. The income generated to fund our budget comes primarily from industries providing a tourism-related product or service. When our visitors spend money in our economy, our quality of life is automatically enriched. Visitors' spending provides for the quality of life we require as a people. We require that government provide us with basic important services such as education, healthcare, infrastructural improvement, and much more. Undeniably, the industry touches every corner of our economy and society, from business to public services to our residents and our natural environment. As gatekeepers of our industry, we need to recognize that tourism plays a vital role in the livelihood and well-being of all areas of our community. Community involvement, therefore, must be encouraged, which will greatly enhance our visitors' experience and naturally improve our tourism product and, by extension, our quality of life. Whether you are a native St. Martina, legal resident or student, civil servant or merchant, tourism is everybody's business. Let us, therefore, individually and collectively do our part by promoting our country in the manner that is infused with pride for all to enjoy and cherish. To understand how our tourism market works, the Department of Communication visited the Tourist Bureau, where we spoke to Acting Department Head, Mr. Augusto Priest, who explained the core responsibilities of the Bureau, how the Tourist Bureau markets St. Martin globally, the benefits of our tourism product on the economy, and he explained how the Bureau is engaged with the various stakeholders. The Tourism Office is responsible for primarily marketing and promoting the destination. Uh, aside from that, we also have the Product Development Division, which is primarily in, uh, involved in activities that helps to improve the island, the image, uh, the product itself, to make sure that we have good service, we have um, clean beaches, our traffic situations, uh, less crime. So we're involved in making sure that the product is what we see it is in our marketing efforts. How is St. Martin marketed and in which regions is this done? Um, we are marketed in, in various regions. Uh, we have several marketing firms that helps us to promote the destination in the USA, uh, South America, uh, we are on the verge of getting a, a, representation, a representation firm back in the Netherlands. Uh, we also do some initiatives within the Caribbean. Um, and we're looking at other areas that we want to tap into as the year goes by. 
And which other areas are those and why? Uh, we want to very much so concentrate on the South American market, which we are right now. But we need to put more effort there because of their winter being our summer. So they travel during the off season, which is beneficial for businesses and, and continued uh, business on the island. Uh, we also want to look at the German market um, um, and um, the French market. How does the Peru pursue the global travel market? Uh, through the various uh, companies that we have, uh, marketing rep companies that we have overseas, uh, we also rely heavily on the social media, uh, social media, the, the um, Facebook, um, uh, we do trade shows as well, uh, travel agents that we, we, we help to assist us in promoting and selling the destination. What are the benefits of our tourism product for the economy? Tremendous. I mean, in words, I can't say how important uh, the tourist office, uh, the tourism industry is to St. Martin. It's the only economy that we have. Um, I think most of us know that. Um, if we want to keep St. Martin afloat, we have to do the right thing in sustaining this, uh, this tourism uh, product that we have. How do we go about safeguarding this one pillar economy and continue to advance with all the computations of other destinations? Um, we always say that travelers today have choices. Um, they can choose to go to St. Kitts, Anguilla, anywhere else. Uh, if in our marketing efforts we go out and tell people to come to St. Martin, we have to ensure that when they come, that whatever it is we tell them that we have, we have to be able to give that to them. Um, if they come instead and meet crime, and they meet bad service, sour faces, if they meet a uh, uh, dirty uh, environment, uh, they will not come back. Tourism is all about repeat business. If we come one time, we want you to come back, we want you to tell a friend, and we want you to come every year. Um, if that doesn't happen, we are not doing the right thing. So, uh, And I think right now we are at that point where we need to start looking at what it is that we're doing and to ensure that with the competition out there, that we keep our heads above water. With Cuba opening up, all of us have a role to play in to ensure that the North American market, for example, doesn't divert or reduce because of uh, other markets, uh, Cuba opening up. So we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing. In what ways does the Tourist Bureau engage with stakeholders? Uh, we work very closely with uh, uh, the tourists, uh, uh, the, the harbor, the SHDA, the airport, um, many of the, the attractions, and the, the marine trade, uh, all of us come together regularly, we meet regularly, uh, discuss plans, we travel to trade missions together where we would promote the destination. Everybody will pitch in where they have to, uh, the hotels, very much so. So it's a combined effort uh, in, in helping to promote St. Martin. Coming up next, St. Martin celebrates the 35th edition of the St. Martin Heineken Regatta as Inside Government continues. Absolutely champagne sailing. There is a place where things can go wrong. There is no better place than that than St. Martin. Shifts, good challenges, typical Caribbean conditions really. Always a great day in paradise. It's one of my favourite gatters, it's great location, great courses, great island, great parties. And when you're racing, it's tough business, much tougher than it is to party. 
Do some serious racing, have some serious fun, and have a great experience on the Friendly Island. In this segment, we take you into the prestigious St. Martin Heineken Regatta, which celebrates its 35th edition of Serious Fun this year. The Department of Communications spoke to Director of Marketing at the Tourism Bureau, Ms. Marla Chamont, who explained the Tourist Bureau's involvement with the regatta, how the regatta was developed over the years, and how important the regatta is to the destination and our economy. Uh, as a St. Martin Tourist Bureau, we actually have to promote the event. Um, it is on our calendar of events as one of the annual events where we can attract people to come to the island. So our role would be to promote. We would bring in some press writers and let them experience the regatta, but also include the island component of it. So they're here for some of the sailing, but they get to um, visit some of our restaurants, they see in our hotels. We take them to different excursions um, on the island so they can experience the whole package of St. Martin. And can you give some more um, detail as to how the marketing is done locally and internationally besides you bringing in um, writers and so forth? Well, um, locally, most of it is done via the Heineken Regatta in terms of advertising in the papers. They'll do some commercials um, in radio PSAs. Uh, internationally, it's more to target in the regional areas that would have persons who are interested in sailing or in the parties. So it would be in magazines. Uh, we do a lot of press releases. We would do some information on our website to promote the event, uh, as well as talk about it throughout the trade shows that we attend. Is there local participation in terms of the races or any other aspects? We quite we do have quite a bit of um, persons that participate in the racing. We have Bobby Velasquez and his team from St. Martin. We have Roger Petit, um, Paul Ellinger, and some others who participate and uh, support in the sailing component of the press boats. Uh, we have a few locals who have their restaurants along the beachside or in the, you know, the different parties where they can vend and sell their foods. Um, you know, it, it's, it's quite elaborate for the restaurants who are there, the, the, the Lees um, and, and the few others that surround in that area. So they kind of benefit from that as well. What does it mean for this event to be held on St. Martin? It's a very prestigious event. Um, many years ago, the Antigua Sailing Week was the biggest sailing event in the Caribbean. St. Martin has managed to um, become first in that region. Uh, we're even larger than Puerto Rico's regatta. So it, it's really prestigious. We have a lot of the partners from the, the Caribbean islands as well as international Europe um, from the US who come down and participate. So this is an opportunity to one showcase the island, have people come and stay in St. Martin and experience the island in itself. The regatta has indeed grown. How have you seen it developed over the years? Uh, it started out first as a small racing event. We had um, just three days the weekend of sailing. Uh, to extend that further, they added additional races. They've added different courses. Uh, they added the parties. So it's, it's really become an overall event for sailors, as well as those persons who love music. Um, and it attracts those who may not have come for the event, the sailing itself. And an estimate how many persons come to the regatta event from the region and internationally? It is a bit difficult to answer that in the sense of um, we are the event is still held in the high season. So measurement of who actually are coming for only the regatta is a bit difficult for us at this point in time. But we do know we have um, in 2013 there was 205 um, boats that participated and these boats coming with crew up to maybe 10 persons and in addition to that um, they come in with family and friends but we have a lot of person who just come outside of the regatta. Uh, in 2014 there was 210 boats that registered for the event and this year at this point in time we're up to about uh, 165 and expect to grow that so we match the dates uh, the amongst that we had before. In closing, how important is the regatta for our destination and our economy? Um, it is really important because of the income that we benefit from. 
a lot of the locals are actually benefiting from this in terms of those who are working in restaurants, the hotels are benefiting from that, the taxi drivers are benefiting because they need to move back and forth, the car rental agencies. Um, so it's, it's a total spin-off for the economy. The, the stores are benefiting the marine sector because sometimes they come in and they may need to fuel up or they may need to buy a part for the boat. So it, it's an overall economic spin-off for the island itself and the people of St. Martin. DCOM also spoke to representatives of the St. Martin Heineken Regatta, Ms. Michelle Cordowicht and Mr. John Leon, who highlighted when and how the Heineken Regatta was established, what is the government of St. Martin's contribution, and why March is chosen for the prestigious event. The St. Martin Heineken Regatta started in 1980. Uh, it was at the time just a couple of local sailors here that wanted to go out and have a, a nice sail. Um, and that grew out to something much bigger. Uh, it took a couple of years, so about 1980. So this is the 35th uh, anniversary of St. Martin and Carigata. What is the government of St. Martin's contribution to Regatta? The government of St. Martin, it's Basically, the St. Martin Heine Carigata is a non-profit organization, and so they rely on funding from um, sponsors, but also from the government. Uh, because the St. Martin Heine Carigata is a very big uh, marketing tool, and biggest, one of the biggest events of uh, St. Martin, and the biggest regatta in the Caribbean, they support us heavily, um, together with multiple other organizations, like the harbor and the airports. Um, and that way, basically what we like to say is that it takes the entire island to throw a party this big. The government has provided uh, us links with uh, marketing concepts and with, uh, with organizations we wouldn't normally be able to reach. And uh, they provide a lot of support with the airport and the port and, uh, and the whole marketing schedule of the island. And the St. Martin Heineken Regatta fits in really well there. Why is regatta usually held um, late February and the beginning of March? Um, the St. Martin Heineken Regatta is part of a big Caribbean racing schedule. Uh, and we're the pretty much the first one on that schedule. And once you change your date, you can't really get back into the schedule. And so far, we believe we have the best date because we sort of kick off the, the regatta schedule in the Caribbean. So a lot of these boats do the Caribbean circuit, as we call it. They come to St. Martin to race, and then they will go to Tortola. They'll go to St. Thomas and Antigua is, for instance, the last one. So a lot of people stay around. Um, there's also a regatta in St. Bart's, and those boats stay here in St. Martin because they can provision here and they have all the equipment and um, opportunities here to prepare their boats, and then they sail the the fall to St. Bart's and then come back again. So St. Martin really functions as a hub. Um, so that's why it's those dates. They're very important in the, the racing calendar. If we would lose those dates and put it later on, many of those boats are already back to the United States or to Europe to continue their Caribbean or their racing schedule there. Stay with us. You're watching Inside Government, Tourism Awareness 2015, the St. Martin Heineken Regatta edition. Absolute champagne sailing. There is a place where things can go wrong. There is no better place than that than St. Martin. Shifts, good challenges. Typical carving conditions really. Always a great day in paradise. It's one of my favourite gatters. It's great location, great courses, great island, great parties. When you're racing, it's tough business. Much tougher than it is to party. Do some serious racing, have some serious fun, and have a great experience on a friendly island. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Heineken Regatta plays a major role in a much larger industry, the marine industry. The Department of Communication got a closer look at how our youth are being prepared to take advantage of what the marine industry has to offer. DCOM started at the education level and spoke to Milton Peters College instructor, Mr. Laurentius Hesterman, in the Carpentry Division, who explained what the overall project is about, how the project is funded, and the importance of our youth receiving the training in the marine industry. And you're the teacher of this project, the boat building project. Yes, Can you give us some insight on what exactly is the project about? Um, it's a big project, Kids on Sea project. It's, it's, it's about kids in uh, sailing boats. But the, the thing that we do here, we are trying to learn the kids to how to build a boat. So that, that's the main, uh, main thing. It's a uh, VSBO, uh, PBL and PKL students. The project we're working right now, uh, we started with third formers because the project is going to take more than a year. So they're going to be in school next year too. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just to learn them skills, to work together, to, to, yeah, to, to have a fun project to motivate the kids. That's, that's the, the main, main thing. Where's the funding coming from for the materials? Uh, it's from the Oranje Fonds, or Samenwerken de Fondsen from, from Holland. So, uh, but uh, the uh, St. Martin Marine Trade Organization that started this project. So the first projects we did, we built uh, two of those boats, they, they came from, from them. And what is the idea when the boat is completed? Uh, this boat we're building right now, it's going to participate in the Heineken Regatta next year. Where did the idea come from to, on completion of the boat, to have the boat in the Heineken Regatta 2016? Uh, we started this project two years ago and we built two of the small boats. And I say, and now we want to, I want to do a big boat because for the third time it's doing the same thing. It's also a challenge for me. And then I, say, oh, I want to do a big boat. And then, uh, yeah, we, we did some uh, politics. And then they say, okay, yes, we're going to do it. And it helps, of course, also that because of the fundings of the Samenwerk and the Fondsen. So. Can you tell us the importance of this project for kids who would like to enter into the marine industry? Um, I think it's really, really important. It's a really big industry with a lot of money. There are no, almost no locals involved, and uh, yeah, we give the opportunity to the kids to learn the skills they need, but only to, also to, uh, to make them aware that there are possibilities for them. And uh, I think it's really good. We have some kids working in a, a marine uh, organization, or in the marine business uh, right now. They, they did the project here, and now they have really, really good jobs in the, in the trade organization already. DCOM caught up with the founder of the Kids at Sea Foundation, Mr. Garth Stein, and he explained what the foundation is all about. The Kids at Sea Foundation, we started um, after sitting in meetings and, and stuff that there's not enough kids or, or youth coming up in the marine industry. To My idea was to get them involved in the marine industry. And like myself, I learned sailing when I was a little boy. And if they're not learning from kids, as an adult to get into it, it's not that easy because you don't have the knowledge of what to do. So the initial process we started was by building um, the boats in the, in the schools. So luckily we, we joined forces with NPC, which is one of the largest government or school on the island. And um, the director there was very um, forthcoming and, and, and working with us. So we've managed to build quite a few boats uh, rowing boats and they can sail at MPC. We had one of the boats built at uh, St. Dominic's, one of the boats built at uh, CIA, and we actually built three boats, I believe, through Reen, through his SBO program. Once they've learned how to build the boat, that's great, but then they've also le learned to teach them how to sail the boat. So that's where the sailing school come in, and that's also part of why I started the sailing school, was to give the, the people up and coming a, a place to learn to be able to move forward and to be able to get involved in the marine industry because there's not a lot of locals involved in our marine industry. Now how was the program funded? Initially it was funded through the Marine Trade Association and then we put in for the grant from the Sambac and the Fonds which is a funding from the Ronya Fonds out of Holland and uh, we luckily we got honored the grant and we get a set amount of money every year for four years coming and the idea is to build it so that it's sustainable so that we can try and keep it going. How many kids are presently in the program? Right now in the sailing program we have 20. There's um, four from St. Dominic's. I think there's 
12, 14 from uh, MPC. There's two from NIPA and then my daughter from CIA. Students of the Kids at Sea Foundation, Mr. Jazz Holiday, Mr. Audie Hassel, and Mr. Wesley Santiago spoke to DCOM and shared their experiences within the sailing program. Um, well, it seemed really interesting and I might have further interest in joining the marine industry after school. And my mom sailed as a kid, so I thought it would be fun to do. So. What have been some of your experiences thus far? Um, I've had a lot of experiences from helping at the yacht club to um, going to the docks at IGY Marina, seeing a bunch of yachts, learning how to sail different parts of boats, sailing on different boats. Just being a part of the regatta was very fun last year. In the sailing program, um, you, you experience a lot. I mean, also how the boat is being built, what is being done, um, every part of the boat, I mean, in experience in the water, how it is. I mean, we, it's all fun game, but it's also serious, you know. I mean, people's fingers can get off, bad stuff can be happening. So, I mean, you gotta be on point, serious stuff goes on. I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, you get seasick. I mean, at times, if you don't eat right, if you don't, I mean, if you're just eating junk food, I mean, if you do the right things, I mean, from my experience, I've gotten seasick a couple of times, you know, for not eating right, you know. Well, what's the experience now? We have also, have also had a seasick experience, not a nice one. But um, as like what Audi was saying, when you looking at the regatta like as a spectator, and now being sailing in it is completely different. It gives you a whole different perspective, one up, and it's really fun. And as the regatta said, it's fun, but it's serious fun because things can go wrong, and you don't want that to happen. That brings us to the end of this special edition of Inside Government. For video on demand of this and all DCOM programming, we invite you to visit the official government website, stmartingov.org. On behalf of the government of St. Martin and all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks for watching.